Amini Sanawe in Moscow. Strained, brutal, revealing, awkward, but also fun. The one and only 2015 is in the now. Ukraine, Syria, all eyes, ears, and focus returned. ISIS got out of hand and Russia put its foot down. Terror went too far. France, Tunisia. Kenya, Nigeria, Lebanon, Turkey, Russia, France again. And then California. Refugees, more refugees, floods of refugees, exhausted, soaking wet, desperate, and not welcome. The UN hid 70 years, FIFA corruption, Cyprus wins and loses, no one really cares. Trump against Muslims, immigrants, ISIS, the internet, basically everyone except for himself. Trump is brilliant. He's great. And Putin got a little love. Trump and Putin, Putin and Trump. Syria, Ukraine, Ukraine, Syria. No, Syria definitely. It stole the thunder. But I just can't get Ukraine out of my mind. This image broadcast on Syrian state television identified by analysts as a modern Russian-made armored vehicle. Amateur video shows alleged Russian battle tank moving into southern Ukraine. Really? Did you just swap the countries? Satellite images show Russia has installed modular units capable of housing hundreds of military personnel. Commercial satellite imagery made public of Russian forces on the move for the last several days. I think I know where it comes from. Concerned about reports about uh, increased uh, Russian military presence in uh, uh, in Syria. It is of great concern that uh, we have seen this steady build-up of military presence. Russia versus the West beat getting old. Not so long ago. Russia is isolated. Russia seems to be quite isolated. Uh, globally. We will ensure that this isolation deepens. The isolation, the isolating, the isolation, the political isolation of Russia. By 2015, it was a step in the right direction. Baby steps. The world is better off when Russia and the United States find common ground and an ability to be able to work together. We don't seek to isolate Russia. There is no objective to isolate Russia. There is not a goal to isolate Russia at all. It was quite a year, to say the least. Let's break it down with Alexei Pushkov. He's head of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Russian Parliament. Thanks for being with us. I think it's fair to say that Russia's strategy in the Middle East has changed during 2015. It was all about Syria. Is Moscow in this for years to come? Because it looks like a mess. Well, I don't think that uh, the Russian involvement in the Syrian crisis uh, looks like a mess. I think it was a necessity. It is uh, a response for a clear uh, and uh, present danger, I mean uh, the Islamic State, uh, and I don't have uh, a feeling that Russia had a choice in this situation. Why did Russia wait so long to get involved in Syria, to warn the world about Turkey, so to say, and ISIS oil ties? Why was 2015 the year to move? 2015 was the year to move because uh, the uh, Islamic State uh, has started to consolidate itself on the territories of uh, Iraq and Syria. 40% of Iraqi territory is controlled by the Islamic State and the Western coalition has done absolutely nothing to weaken its position. So if Russia uh, did not interfere, uh, there are strong fears that the Islamic State would have uh, taken over uh, Damascus and a large part of Syria. So as I say, it was a necessity. Why didn't Russia warn the world about Turkey and its ties to ISIS oil trade earlier? Uh, I think that, uh, as uh, always in politics, there are priorities. 
Uh, at uh, the, in previous time, um, the uh, scale of the exchange uh, in oil trade between the Islamic State and Turkey first was not fully known to Russia, although there was some information, but also uh, we had a pretty good relationship with Turkey. So uh, to endanger this uh, relationship uh, by disclosing certain things which could have been embarrassing to the Turkish government, as far as I know, nobody did this. Not the United States, although of course they had this information, nor France. And so uh, I think that um, uh, Russia uh, made this when uh, it uh, started to take a direct part in the uh, operation against the Islamic State and when it uh, understood that without cutting off the financial resources of the Islamic State this fight uh, will last for a very long time. Before Russia was not involved in this area and when it started to be involved it has disclosed uh, this, uh, this information. Global terror made a very heavy mark throughout the year, starting with Charlie Hebdo coming full circle in Paris. Of course, over 200 Russians, uh, a plane blown up over Sinai. Has ISIS become a common threat? Because it seems like some would argue not enough so. Well, ISIS is a common threat, uh, but um, I don't think that in uh, Western uh, countries uh, there is a full understanding of this threat. Uh, two days be before it became clear that uh, 14 people in California were killed by uh, advocates uh, of, uh, and, and basically people who refer themselves to ISIS, Obama uh, made a statement saying that the ISIS does not represent a vital threat to the United States. So I think the understanding is not yet here, although there is an awareness of this threat. But uh, for the time being, I think the West is playing down uh, the real danger. What was the biggest difference, do you think, in U.S. and Russia ties between 2014 and 2015? What has changed? I think what has changed is that the United States uh, are forced today to have a dialogue with Russia and Syria. I have to stress that this is basically the only area of international politics today where we do have a dialogue. Uh, if we talk about Europe, the United States are on the same track. They try to isolate Russia and they take sanctions against Russia like the sanctions were enlarged by the American administration. So uh, I would say that Syria is the area where the United States feel that if they don't engage in dialogue with Russia, they will be sidelined. They may stay uh, at the margins of the uh, military and political processes in Syria. Speaking about the approach of the Obama administration, what about Ukraine? Has that been forgotten? No, Ukraine definitely is not forgotten and uh, Vice President Biden uh, has shown us that Ukraine is still a priority. Uh, for the uh, U.S. foreign policy. Definitely Obama does not want to uh, have too much of a personal involvement in this and he avoids Mr. Poroshenko, but Ukraine uh, will be used uh, and the United States intend to use it uh, as a kind of bulwark uh, against Russia in Eastern Europe. You mentioned sanctions, the ruble not looking good. What's your guess for 2016? Is it going to be another rocky year for the Russian currency? I think 2016 will be uh, not an easy year due to the low prices uh, for, for oil, due to the European sanctions and the American sanctions. But I also uh, hope that 2016 will be the last year of the European sanctions. There is no rationale for keeping those sanctions. Uh, half of Europe is against it. Uh, a large part of uh, the European business is against it. I think that uh, these sanctions may be reconsidered next summer uh, and I hope that uh, it will be the beginning of the end of this crisis between Russia and the European Union. All right, Alexei Pushkov, head of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Russian Parliament, thanks for being in the now and enjoy your holiday season. Thank you. Lifting sanctions, now that would be a gift. Imagine that.
fun. There wasn't a great amount of that in 2015, but we found some frames that focus on the lighter side of things. Politics doesn't always have to be dry. It can make you feel alive or like you want to fly. And then really important moments, like a rare touch, can be completely comical because of one slight move. And then there's the best worst moments caught on camera, starting with my personal favorite when ECB head was interrupted by a special guest. Being the firm. And there's always the darndest thing some politicians say, too. We're speeding up training of ISIL forces, including volunteers from Sunni tribes. I call for calm and de-escalation. Diplomacy and de-escalation, calm and de-escalation, de-escalating uh, the situation. Hitler didn't want to uh, exterminate the Jews at the time. He wanted to expel the Jews. I said if you could go back in time and kill baby Hitler, would you? I need to know. And crazy. Hell yeah, I would. Plus, sometimes they're just silent. The response from nearly every one of the governments represented here has been absolutely nothing. Utter silence. Deafening silence. Perhaps you can understand why Israel is not joining you in celebrating this deal. Got it? Coming up, the CIA made predictions about 2015. We look at what they got right and what they got wrong. Stay in the now. Here's what people have been saying about Redacted tonight. Give it to us. Redacted is full on awesome. Really? The only show I go out of my way to watch oh, every week. Watch. It yeah. really packs a punch. Wow. Lee Camp is the John Oliver of RT America. They do have the same accent. Hey, we are apparently better than boobs. Nothing's better than boobs. You see, people you've never heard of love Redacted tonight. The president of the World Bank, though, hates it. Seriously, he sent us an email. Спасибо, что ты терпела две недели. Сейчас папа вернется. Давай, все. As an oath to my beautiful wife Christina, uh, I decided to share this experience with her to see what it's like being pregnant. А беременные тоже с такими проблемами часто вам приходят? Вот именно беременные женщины. Yeah, you know, I'm going through it because I said I'd do it. During the next two weeks, I will be changing my diet, giving up on my old habits, and coming as close as possible to being pregnant together. What do you think about 
without sanction. Easy, right or wrong, but in, uh, I definitely think sanctions are better than conflict. You don't perform for diplomatic reasons. You perform for humanitarian ways. I'm talking obviously about Edward Snowden. I believe he's a hero. Um, I believe he's coming directly from his heart. Fresh start, resolutions, promises, and pledges. You know the drill. I will not, I will not pursue, I will not pursue, it will not involve, I will seek authorization. We will not allow it. 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 So are they going to keep their promises? Of course they are. Joining us in the now is Nigel Parsons. He's the CEO of TVC News and the former head of Al Jazeera English. Thanks so much for being with us. Pleasure. Um, okay. This year will be remembered, of course, by people, depending on the media they watch, see, read, follow. Um, what do you take away from 2015? 2015, migrant crisis. That's the biggest one for you? Without doubt. In Western Europe, I think that is the number one topic. Why are we seeing less of less of it in the media as this year comes to an end? Are we? In, we are. Uh, in the UK, we are. It's, it's, it's in the papers, on, on the TV every single day, and we are not the most affected country. Um, I mean, I was talking to a Czech politician yesterday, and he says it's still a huge issue uh, in the countries of, of South, Southeastern Europe and the Balkans. Um, I don't think it's going away. In Europe, certainly. In global media, um, if we talk about international coverage, of course, ISIS will be one of the strong points when we look back at 2015. Russia had a very tough year as well. What is it doing wrong? What is Russia doing wrong? Yeah. Um, I think there needs to be a lot more engagement. And I don't think, you know, it's Russia by itself doing wrong. I think, actually, you know, there's two kind of superpowers in the world that there has been in my entire life and it's been Russia and America. Um, they're more similar than we give them credit for, aren't they? For me, they're kind of mirrors of each other. Um, you know, I've, I know America makes a big play of exporting democracy to the world, but I find their political system quite opaque and, you know, quite corrupt. Um, and you know, they have an awful lot of the same sort of values, uh, they seem to, and yet they're always at loggerheads. And you have to wonder whether it's not some Orwellian 1984 game, or you have lots of little proxy wars around the world and you keep your own population in fear uh, and make out that the rest of the world hates you, but it's simply not true. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, in terms of the media, how these two superpowers are portrayed, um, I agree that they're very similar. Are they portrayed similarly in the global media, at least this year? I wouldn't say so. I mean, if, you know, I can only kind of speak for Europe, although I'm running an African channel. It, it, neither of these stories are very big in Africa, actually. Um, but, but with, you know, within Europe, uh, obviously, the, the, the US has its huge supporters, and Russia has its supporters. Um, there's a lot of debate, and I, and I think it's quite balanced. I think the balance gets lost, both in Russia and in the US. They, I mean, you know, when I first came to Russia, I used to watch programs like Kuliki and, you know, lots of satire, and it just doesn't seem to be there anymore. Um, again, in the US, you know, I go there and I can't find any news about the rest of the world unless you go to a real specialist channel. What do you think the main challenges for the media was this year and will be coming into 2016? Um, I think it's striking the right balance, you know. I mean, I think the media lost the plot a lot in the, in, in the Middle East. I mean, I was particularly, um, I mean, Iraq, once the decision was made to go to war, although there was huge opposition to it, both in the media and the public, once the decision was made to go to war, the media got behind our boys. Um, in Libya, um, you had media like Al Jazeera cheering on the Muslim Brotherhood in Libya and in Egypt, and then you had you know, I have to say, even UK domestic channels getting very excited about the end of Gaddafi. Um, and I think it was all a huge mistake. I happened to be working in Libya at the time when NATO started bombing. 
Um, and I think, you know, what I can't understand is politicians just go on making the same mistakes again and again. It's like Groundhog Day. What mistakes should politicians learn from the experience in Libya? Well, they should have learned that one in Iraq, but actually. They didn't, exactly. I, you know, I understood why America went, went to Afghanistan. They just wanted to lash out and have some revenge. And then they kind of, t you know, one in Afghanistan took their eye off the ball, got bored, said, oh, let's have another war in Iraq. You know, why? Um, I never understood that. Do you think there's something more to them not learning? And is the media questioning these unlearned lessons? I think uh, a lot of media are, and certainly so there's a lot on social media questioning them. Um, I, I'm less convinced by some of the mainstream media. And yes, sometimes you have to think, oh, this, there must be a conspiracy here. I mean, it's impossible to make such a mess of things unless you really wanted to. Um, or, or maybe they are just stupid. I don't know. How do you find out what's happening in Syria when there's so many different sources, so many different ways to hear a story, and so many different stories of what's happening? That's a very complicated one. I mean, I, I, you know, a story like Syria, I do tend to look you know, at different channels who are carrying different viewpoints because you know, they all have their own agenda. Whether that's the BBC or Al Jazeera, Russia Today, CNN, they all have an agenda. And I think you have to look at all of them and then try and read between the lines because none of them has a monopoly on truth. There's always going to be small groups of people who question everything um, and who have their own opinions and who aren't fooled. But media is an incredibly powerful tool um, for misinformation as well as information. Right. I want to play a game with you. Association. Yeah, I'm very nervous about this one. <laughs> Don't be nervous. Uh, one word answers if possible. 2015. Migrant crisis. You've already answered that one. Okay. <laughs> Breakthrough. Breakthrough? <laughs> Doesn't mean anything to me. Place. Syria. Misconception. Um, means nothing to me. Media. Information wars. Politics. Dirty. Threat. Syria, ISIS. Fail. Politics. Fact. <laughs> Fact. Uh, where are the real facts? I don't know. I can't pass on that one. Fun. Fun. Um, diving. Nigel Parsons, CEO of TVC News with us in the now, also former head of Al Jazeera English. Thanks so much Thank for you being very with much. us. Thank you. Terrorist tactics will become increasingly sophisticated and designed to achieve mass casualties. Yes, the CIA predicted ISIS in 2015, way back in 2000. What else did they get right? Mass execution of Ethiopian Christians in Libya. More than 120 people have been killed. New form of uh, terror. ISIS's aggressive and successful online propaganda campaign. No common policy ready for the massive push of so many more desperate people. Flooding into Europe to escape war and poverty on two continents. Suicide bombs, as you mentioned, automatic weapons, grenades. There are still a lot of questions as to how did these men get these weapons. We're going to build a wall. It's going to be a real wall. Immigration out there amongst ordinary folk has now become a huge negative. People are furious. Pour l'immigration clandestine, le retour dans leur pays. <laughs> so who was the number one villain of 2015? No, not Putin. Here's Lori Harfinis with all you need to know about Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump is bad. Donald Trump is bad. Year in review style here. Take a look back at 2015. Yeah. Who's the worst guy out there to America? Donald Trump. Oh, agreed. What was America's biggest bad guy in 2015? 
Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Yep. Worse than anyone on the planet. Yeah. Hey, Mr. NYPD car, who do you think America's biggest bad guy of 2015 was? Donald Trump. Donald Trump is bad. <laughs> Donald Trump is bad. <laughs> so ISIS yeah. has not hurt Americans as much as Trump. No, you're right. What did he do in 2015 that not was worse cool. than ISIS? <laughs> so many to choose from. I don't know, a lot of people would say Donald Trump, but mm, I mean, you can't really talk about Donald Trump like that because, I mean, he really didn't do anything very wrong. A lot of people are saying Trump. Nope. I'm a Trump supporter. I'm going to have to say the guy, since I'm from South Carolina, the guy that did the killing in Charleston. Oh, you mean someone who actually did something bad and not just yeah, someone not just spouting talking, their mouth yeah. off? <laughs> At least we don't know what he's going to do, That's you know? Right. That's <laughs> we right. Know exactly what the other ones will. That's right. <laughs> Donald Trump is bad. Donald Trump is bad. Donald Trump is bad. I don't go like that. Donald Trump is bad. It's been a bad year for Christmas. A war was raged this holiday season. One family sued by city officials over a spectacular Christmas light display. The mayor in Florida wanted the show shut down. I guess it was offensive to some. Some went further. School officials in New Hampshire banned the word Christmas from party flyers. The Christmas tree lighting was turned into just tree lighting ceremony. What festive fun. Even candy trees are becoming shapeless. Yummy, supposedly tree-shaped chocolates with no Christmas word in sight on the wrappers. Merry whatever. One American mall swapped Christmas decorations for a winter-themed glacier. And then, of course, there was the annual Starbucks Xmas cup that never was. I asked for my coffee, they asked for my name, and I told them my name is Merry Christmas. So guess what? Starbucks, I tricked you into putting Merry Christmas on your cup. But we are on to Starbucks. It's not their fault. They've gone red. This holiday season seems like the best time to update you on a gift we gave to children. In the now raise $6,000 for Russian children with autism with the help of our viewers. Attacks on RT by the State Department helped us come up with an idea to crowdfund money for a cause and stand up to media empire. And we did. Our sunny world, who we donated to, says thank you. Why autism? Because it unites. It's a battle that sees no lines, countries, or policies, and it can bring people together. Люди с аутизмом рождаются все больше и больше каждый год во всех странах мира, и в Америке, и в России, и во всех странах Европы. И проблема оказать помощь таким детям, таким семьям, это проблема совершенно всеобщая, потому что эта тема действительно совершенно глобальная, и я очень надеюсь на то, что те проблемы, которые сейчас есть в отношениях между разными странами, эти проблемы, возможно, будут преодолены за счет какой-то более высокой идеи, более высокой цели, например, помощи людям с аутизмом во всем that was the head of our sunny world, Igor Spitzberg, who personally says thank you to all that donated. On that note, I leave you from all of us at In The Now. Have a happy, healthy new year. Stay with us for 2016. I think it's going to be a wild ride. Till then, it's now or never. <laughs>